do it. All right, good morning, Circle City Con. Glad you guys made it to the first talk of Sunday. That's always a tough one. So appreciate that. This is a talk about automating malicious JavaScript de de obfuscation. And uh, to get started, just talk about the quick agenda. Agendas, we're going to talk about the obfuscation techniques of, um, well, we're going to focus on rig, but these obfuscation techniques can be used across any type of JavaScript and can be employed to use to, to de obfuscate um, across different types of JavaScript. We're going to talk about the techniques, then we're going to talk about how you can find samples of this stuff. Um, manual analysis, I've got a, a lab machine here, we'll go through and do a little debugging. And then once we understand what we're looking at, just how do we can automate that so that we can retrieve what is obfuscated um, automatically. So my name is Chad Robertson, I'm a security researcher. Um, why, why you care about this, why I care about it, I think it's really fun to track threats. I think it's fun to track um, um, threats as they evolve. This stuff does evolve, but uh, we, I find that it evolves fairly slowly, especially once you understand, once, once, once I understand how a JavaScript works or how something works, it's typically uh, a couple months it'll stay static. And then usually when it changes, it'll be just a little minor change. So then we'll have to just go in and make a quick uh, tune to the, the script that's doing the automation. I think it's really fun. Um, so there's, there's, I guess there's two other, two main components of, of what can be gained from uh, automating JavaScript deobfuscation, and that's adversary uh, intel. Um, what kind of payloads are being deployed? The type of, uh, if, if like a, an RC4 key changes, which hasn't happened for a long time. Um, so intel, and then also uh, indicator discovery. So if we can find what the domains are, URLs, then we can resolve those IPs. We can use those in our sims or whatever. Um, or we can figure out what payload's being delivered. If we're talking about exploit kits, but Obviously, there's lots of other ways that uh, lots of other ways to employ obfuscation. Anyway, we'll focus on exploit, exploit kits for this. Um, so, starting with obfuscation techniques, there's a few of them. These are the ones that I mean, there's tons of them, right? You can do you can do anything you want to, but uh, these are some of the ones that we're going to be looking at here. I'm going to be looking at this presentation, so I just wanted to highlight these. It's uh, the word boundaries, uh, minification, like minimizing code is like scrunching things together, and that's what beautifiers do. They kind of explode that out to make it look easier, make it easier to read. Um, adding spaces, white space, new line characters, those kind of things uh, into the strings and into JavaScript to make it more difficult to see, analyze, and analyze. Putting comments in, it just it just makes it more difficult to, to understand what the code is doing. Random variable names, so that's a, you know, that's just a string, but, and, and we'll see in just a second that you can use random variable names alongside of system function re rewriting. And this is a, I think this is a, you may know what, what, what that's actually changing, what that variable is going to be equal to. Yeah, it's sub str. So it's just taking, oh, it, I'm sorry, is it fuzzy? Uh, it's just taking the string s and then hex 75 and then bs and concatenating that to t. R, which is S U B S T R, and then um, it's making that variable equal to that, <clears throat> and then it uses that later in the code instead of using a sub substring. And then um, integer integer obfuscation, this, instead of uh, 255 or like base base uh, uh, base 64, those kind of numbers that that you do the math in, in the background are are easy to um, identify, and, and like you can look at it and be like, well, that's base 64. Um, so you, if you just do integer math, it makes it harder to see that. The um, XOR encoding, all different kinds, like base 64 we already talked about. Unicode, changing characters in Unicode. Flipping things to hex, uh, XOR, whatever, that's just XOR. Uh, this is a random string. It's a HTML document that I XOR with dead deep uh, rotating key. Uh, so that's what that looks like. And then ASCII non-printable. So this, the, the script that we're going to be looking at in this, in this presentation is uh, the rig landing page's current rig. And um, that's the, the the data chunk, the data blob, and it's got all kinds of junk in it that has to be cleaned out. And you can see the ASCII non-printable, the A or 9D, over and over and over again. So that's uh, it. Just makes it more difficult to understand what that what that data blob's doing. Um, and then in the in the JavaScript, it's removed with the split split function, which we can just duplicate in Python code. Okay. So um, finding samples. Where do you find this stuff? 
VT is a really great source, obviously. Uh, uh, Pastebin and other websites that we'll talk about, uh, uh, talk about the different websites you can get this from in a minute. Um, focus on VT for first. VR rules, it's writing a hunting rule. If you have access to VT, VT intelligence. Um, this, I think I retrieved 116 different rig pages from this. And this was a slight modification. They, they changed the way the split function was, um, was, was in the code, so I had to change it a little bit, but the, the, just running that. Once you identify what it looks like by going to malware traffic analysis or whatever website that has these samples, um, write a regular expression to identify it, throw it in a Yara rule, throw it up on, on VT, and hunt with it, find ex other examples, or once your Yara rule stops detecting, then knowing that you have to change it, figuring out what changed, updating the regular expression, and then continuing the track. Uh, another place is like pastebin. So uh, stop here for just a second. The, finding compromised sites is really interesting. So you, you find sites that are compromised. This is somebody's posted a bunch of uh, uh, compromised sites on pastebin. Taking this list, feeding it into a sandbox, setting up a sandbox to, to churn these out some, with some routine, running them from, on different browsers or um, from different uh, IPs and VPN IPs to uh, try to, to retrieve whatever is being hosted on these random sites, on these compromised sites, and then trying to automate, shove that into the decoder, the automated decoder, to figure out what you get. Uh, building that infrastructure is, I mean, cuckoo is free, and this stuff is out there everywhere, not only on Pastebin, where people will post a bunch of compromised sites, but um, malware traffic analysis, go and a bunch of other ones, uh, is finding compromised sites, putting them in a list, pulling that stuff down, finding the things that, that don't look right, and then shoving them through a list of decoders and accumulating uh, indicators. Another thing people do that I think is really really interesting and, and when I first started I thought was really cool is people will, um, people whose sites get compromised will post questions about what this crazy PHP code is on their site to sites like SuperUser. And they'll usually post a sample in there. And so you can just go on super user or just go on Google and search for, you know, virus. Because like an admin that gets, somebody has a WordPress site that they set up and it gets compromised, they're going to go on some site like this and be like, as a virus on my, on my website. And then you can search for like virus in WordPress or virus. And then you, once you, once you see this stuff, then you can start seeing what it looks like, what that PHP code might look like. And then you can refine your search to find additional samples. And you can pivot. So once you get that data, you can pivot either pivot in Google or pivot in, in VT, um, to find other examples of that same code that has been posted on websites, compromised websites, that are then doing the, the tier two connection back to where these uh, these kids are being hosted. That's all interesting stuff too. But that's not really the point of what we're doing here. We're just doing the, the landing page geofiscation. There's a bunch of other sites you can get stuff. Um, you're all clear, everybody's familiar with all these sites. These are all at the end of the presentation too. Uh, okay, so manual analysis. It's always best to start with beautifying. Always, always with beautify because it's so. It's usually a big chunk of, of, of junk that has to be cleaned up. Uh, then remove junk code and then debug as needed. We'll go through each one of those. Uh, the beautifying step. Start out with the what's on the left, and then run it through it. It's an online beautifier. It turns into what's on the right. It still looks like. Uh, still, it's, it's a little hard to understand, but it's, if you just you spend some time on that and see that, like, uh, I don't have a pointer, but. Um, like that if statement, the if type of, that's undefined, so it's taking the U and, and sticking it to the U undefined, and then um, GFGF, and then GF is, GFGF is, is defined right before that, so it's HND, and so that's making it a defined string, and replace is down there, and all kinds of other things that are, that are peppered in. Um, but it's, a, in order to understand this, it's easy, I mean, you can go through that and figure that out, but it's easier just to go through and rename everything so that it makes sense, and it's really clear. And you can usually replace, like, multiple lines of, of junk JavaScript with things that are more interesting and more um, useful. So uh, one, at one point you can't, like, uh, because this has non, uh, non ASCII characters, I try to use like uh, JSD talks. I use JSD talks fairly regularly, but it doesn't like those, so it airs out. Um, JSD talks is really cool. It's a locally, it just runs a little server on the, just runs as a server and, and you post your, your JavaScript in and it'll, it'll um, uh, analyze it, it'll, it'll beautify it, and then um, it's pretty neat, but it, it wouldn't work for that. So uh, remove junk code. There's that, and you can change that to. Uh, I guess you, I hope you can see that. I don't know. So that's a. Uh, that's going to change into the substring that we saw earlier, and so that. 
ends up, so you can just make, make substring and give a substring instead. And then you see a for loop there, so the for loop has a bunch of random variable names and a, the replace uh, REP plus LACE and then a bunch of other junk, so you can change all that into, um, uh, into things that are easier to read. So anyway, so, so this is the substring. The substring gets changed to substring. The, this is another, uh, this is changing into, this is eval. Okay, so this is saying, this is changing ETRTA into the string eval, so then you can use the eval later on. It's evaling accumulator one. Um, but you can clean that up just to say eval, right? And then, uh, so that just takes this big junk of, this big pile of junk data, junk code, and it cleans it up to look like that which is much easier to read and it makes a lot more sense. So the landing page that we're look at, gonna look at in this uh, presentation has three loops and three, three, uh, six chunks of data that are accumulated and uh, or, uh, um, that run through three distinct loop um, functions. And so we'll look at the first one and then we'll look at a couple, a little bit of the, the second and the third. We won't debug through the second and the third, but we'll look at the, main, the first one mainly. Um, but that's what, it, that's what it looks like uh, after you clean it up a little bit. It makes it much easier to read. Uh, let's see, so then uh, to do a manual analysis, replace the eval with a console log. Eval, um, console log just prints it to the log, so much, it's much easier to see, or you can see it. Uh, what's this? Um, oh, this is the three loops for the landing page. This is the second loop, so it looks very similar, and you can clean it up the same way. This is the second loop, and then uh, that's cleaned up version of the second loop. This is, oh, this is interesting. This is a, I think anybody can see that, but does anybody recognize by looking at that real quick what that's doing? I was, I looked at that and I was like, what is that? And like the first time I saw it, but after you see it a few times, it's, it's just, this, this is base 64. Um, but that's really easy to replace, or yeah, to replace in Python. Um, and so this is a, this is what we end up with at the very end. So you have, uh, there's the, the key, and that's an RC, I think. An RC4 key, yeah, and then the URL. Um, and so we'll get to that in the manual analysis piece and debug through and see that. And then this is the, the final loop, and it, it, it's the, um, the one that's responsible for the flash file, and so there you can see flash strings after you get through that debugging. All right, so demo, I was a little, a little weird switching videos, so we'll see how this works. All right, so this is the the beautified landing page. It's uh, so you can see all the. Hopefully, you can see that. There's there's a, a a data blob here. This is this is data that's inside, and I've renamed these strings already. So this is string two to make it easier to see. And you see the split function there at the end, string one, and all the stuff that's being passed in string one. The regular expression that's being applied to this data, um, the for loop, the accumulator loop, um, the undefined stuff that we saw earlier, and then there's a counter. So the counter is 3227. That's being used down. Oh. Um, and we'll step through this and look at it. And then we'll log it to the console log. So pop in the IE, run this. Maybe. There we go. All right, so to debug in, in IE, you just gotta add the debugger semicolon string. And I've got a bunch of, uh, bunch of watches here on the uh, right, which are all currently undefined. But as we step through, we'll see stuff pop over there. We'll close this one up, make it a little bit easier to see. All right, so we're right here, uh, and then we'll F11 into this variable, F11 into that one, and then there's a regular expression, and let's see. So that should, no. Which, 
F11. Okay, so that populated there. And then I should be able to just put a breakpoint. Okay, there's already a breakpoint on the console. So basically, we're going to step through here. It's going to do all that, and then it's going to break on the console.log. So let's just play this. All right, and then we should look in the console, and then do a bunch of errors. Um, and then once we step past that, I'm going to write that to uh, console log. All right, so this is the output of the first loop, and it's just this is so that's the first layer. We've 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 peeled back one layer of obfuscation, and now we've gotten to the second layer of obfuscation, which looks like this. Um, so what we can do is instead of doing debugger, let's restart this. I'm going to go change that to let's turn this to eval. And we'll go inside there instead of just going over it. Save this. Restart IE. Go into debug mode. Open the file. Maybe. Okay. Working. Open. Okay. And then uh, go down to where we were, where we care, and then. Uh, there's already a file. There's a so we'll play until we get to that file accumulator. We'll step into that, and now we are inside of the eval, and now we can go through this second layer. Okay. So looking at the second layer, we see that base 64 encoding code, and then we can see we return R, which. Um, We'll just jump down and return R, which we don't have any breakpoints before that. So let's play up the break to return R. There's that. Now we can look at R and see, let's see, copy, new tab, paste. All right, so there's what R looks like after the second layer of decoding. And it's starting to make more sense now. So you can see that this is a, a visual, a VB script. And it's got a bunch of new line characters in it and stuff, but it's a DB script. So uh, we understand there's two layers of this obfuscation. There's a VB script. Now we get to the VB script. The VB script needs a, bunch of, a little bit of cleaning up. It's got to take the new lines out and uh, format it a little bit. Um, but now we've got something interesting. So we now have a key. We have our RC4 key. This RC4 key you can search, and it's been, it's been the same for a long time. Um, and then there's the URL. That's to the... Uh, URL that we care about. And then there's also a stub code. So there's this uh, DLL var variable, DLL code. And so what it does is it, um, um, let me see if I can find one that's been beautified because I don't have internet access to it. Um, beautified, second layer BBS. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. Um, so this is taking, it's pulling down. It's, it's, it's basically taking this, uh, the text from this, and it's concatenating it with this header, which is, uh, and, and um, it's concatenating it with this header, and then it's making the payload. And so we can look at that. Am I, this thing has frozen twice since I've been standing here, and it hasn't frozen for a long time. But it made it through that, that far, so that's good. Um, Anyway, so that's that's the header. It takes the header, it downloads the the, um, the URL, and then it sticks them together, and then that's the payload. And then you can track payload by doing that. All right, so we got that far. Let's switch back over to we've really got everything we need. So so we've got so we understand how to de deobfuscate layer one. We understand how to deobfuscate layer two. We understand what we want. We have a URL variable that is interesting. We have uh, a DLL code variable that's interesting, and we understand how how those layers are um, obfuscated, so we can just pull those out. So switching back over here. All right. 
So now how do we obvious or how do we how do we automate this? So now we we've, we've got a, a we've got a sandbox set up. We're pulling all these down from compromised sites. We know how they work. We we've, we've beautified it. We've we've understood the code. Um, well, I mean, data into obfuscation routine equals obfuscated code. Data into deobfuscation routine equals deobfuscated code. So how do we do that? Uh, we step through each piece and deobfuscate it. This is super small, but um, okay. So we first have, we have to find the variables, the, the data blobs. We have to find the data blobs, and so this is just a regular expression that's doing that in. Python. So on the left you see the script, on the right you see the Python output, and uh, it's got the variable name there at the top, and that's how you do it. Next down is uh, uh, taking out the, doing the split. So there's the first split, um, and then after cleanup on the right, so you see we now we no longer have those uh, non-printable, the ASCII non-printable characters. Uh, there's the regular expression. And then we can apply the same regular expression in Python with that function that's defined there. Uh, automation for loop. Um, so there's the for loop in the code, and we can do the same thing in Python with those two loops. Base64 is super easy. So that's how we do it in Base64. Decode that, and then um, that's it. So let's look at this code. We'll hop out of here. Put in my VM, maybe. There we go. Give me just a second. So you can see that, so clear screen, okay. Um, so inside this LSH LA, there's a bunch of files in here in the bin file. Uh, there's an LP, LP decoded, that's the output, the eventual output. There's an LP text, let's take a look at that. So let's, let's look, uh, uh, what is less it? LP.text, yeah. So that's what we were seeing before, it's a bunch of junk. This is the data blob that we need to clean up. One of them. Uh, you can see the first split there at the end of that string. Uh, there's another data blob. There's all the, there's the undefined string, the eval stuff. Uh, so that looks familiar. This is what we're looking for. There's, let's see, there's the rig decode Python script. There's the, um, and then there's a stub. And so let me RM the stub, and then RM the LP decoded. We're going to make those again. Um, and then let's see, there's LP test did decode. Okay, so then it's less the uh, Python script. And I mean, it's not too terribly long, but that's pretty much what we're going to use to de decode this. And we're just going to do exactly what we just saw. We're just going to reverse it. And I put a bunch of comments, put a bunch of pauses in it so we can see each, other, each, each time, like each step. And we can see the different layers. So we'll just go through it and see. Uh, but you run it by just doing Python dash dash LP and then giving it to the landing page dot text file. 
Um, I guess I'm not seeing the very good point of split All right, so, um, and I just put little debug messages in there. So this is the, the data strings that we're pulling out with the regular expression. And we should be able to go to the top and see the same thing we've already seen. Um, super long. I guess we can't, but anyway, that's the data string. Uh, there's the counter. That's a string that's also regular. Just, just regex out of the data, of the of the file. Um, there's a split value. So uh, there's the split value, and then if we take that, there's the. So now we're taking one specific variable, the first variable, and we're going to we're going to take out that that uh, was it a nine. Um, we're going to take that out of the out of the string, and then so there's the cleaned up first data blob. We haven't done anything with it except remove the non-printables. And it's starting to look a little bit more sane. Uh, let's see. Uh, the regular expression is also needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So this is before the regular expression cleanup. And then after the regular expression cleanup, then I think we apply that. Yeah. Um, so we apply that regular expression to the data. And then now we've, that's this, the, um, we're ready to do the layer, the layer two deobfuscation, which is just the, the base 64 layer. And so you throw that base 64 decode that, and then um, you get the BB script. That's right there. Go to the top here, um, and it's just pretty clean and easy to figure out what this is doing. There's um, various DOM stuff in there. There's the URL, there's the key, what we're looking for, and then there's the DLP code array. This script also takes that out and builds the stub out of the DLP code variable so that you can um, then uh, use that URL and that stub to build the payload. And so that should now be in the uh, oh, SLA. That should now be in this folder, which it is. So, xxd stub at less. There's our standard PE file. Uh, and so, we see the, the PE header, the resource sections, and there's a few function names, I think, in here. Yeah. Create event stuff. And uh, I looked at this. You can look at this on VT, and I think somebody called it server and some other stuff. Let me see. But, I mean, that's just the stub. It's not. Let me find the VT tab. Um, anyway, the you can you can MD5, you can do an MD5 of this and search for it. Uh, somebody's, somebody's already done this and then uploaded it. MD5 sign. MD5 sign. Yeah. And then uh, you can look at look at that. So, and then if we look at the uh, the landing page decoded file, uh, um, we get the visual visual basic script and then the uh, um, the step file. So that's really what we want. We want to be able to automate all this. We want to be able to take an obfuscated script. We want to pull it, pull it through automated means, pull it through scripts, pull them down, accumulate them, and then slam them into a Python de deobfuscator, uh, decryptor, or whatever, um, depending on, I mean, if you're going to do the payload decryption, you would have to apply the key. It's an RC4 key, so you have to take that key and apply it and decrypt the payloads being downloaded from the URL and then build payload. But um, you can pull a lot of really, really interesting stuff by doing this. Uh, so that's that. Let's go back over here. Right. 
Um, I think I went really fast, but that's uh, that's really it. Um, that's 37 slides. I'm fine. But I get to going really fast. So that's it. Um, there's a there's a project out there called Malgetter that I found when I was doing this. I mean, and, and it's really cool because it's it's currently updated. There was an update three days ago. Um, there's there's various so there's threads. There's a campaign. There's a rig thread. There's a rig campaign, and inside that campaign, there's various threads. There's like a I don't even remember the, the decimal IP Goodman EI test. Those uh, different threads that are inside of uh, that are operating in rig right now. Malgetter will will uh, help with each one of those. Um, it's a tool that analyzes those, and I think it outputs. I don't have the C on my screen, but. I just found it before I came in. I thought it was really cool. So go check that out. Um, there's also, and it's by the NAO sec person. That person, the, there was a, uh, an, R an RSA shadow getter, shadow something that was posted recently that talked about rig and talked about the different campaigns, the different threads that are going on in rig um, that mentions this guy. And so anyway, that's really cool. Check that out. And then um, that paste bin that I posted earlier with the comp compromised sites, that's there. Um, uh, Kev the Hermit uh, has a, a rig decoder. I don't know that it works. I tried to work it, use it on the landing page that I had. It didn't work, and, and obviously they change every once in a while. I'm not sure how how often his has changed. His is updated, but there's a rig decoder that he has. Um, there's also another one out there that's I don't get it if you search for it. Node.js is a, a product that's um, for doing deobfuscation automation, and then there's a couple other resources there. Uh, so yeah, sorry that was really fast, but there you go. That's my, that's the thing. Anybody that has any questions? Obviously, I have plenty of time to talk about that. So yes, sir. Yeah. It did. Nice. I love J, uh, JS Detox, it's, it's, and that's, that's, that's a good tip. Thank you. Uh, I used to use it a lot, but just the, the non-printable doesn't like those, but that's, that's great. And it's, it did the whole deobfuscation for you, and, and you just changed the... So, yeah. JS Detox is good stuff. Anything else? I'm, I'll hang out here for a little while if you guys want to come up, and I can, I can walk through any of this stuff. Uh, Happy to talk about it, so just let me know. Thanks.